Are you interested in building a powerful video calling application using React? No, man, I'm good. Well, if you're more exciting than this guy, then keep watching. Today, we're going to build a video calling application with React. We'll be using the Stream Video SDK for this, which has a few advantages. We are running on a global edge network, which optimizes latency and reliability automatically behind the scenes. Permissions give us fine-grained control over what we, as well as the users, can do and what they can't do. This is a powerful tool to build complex applications. The video quality and the codecs are optimized for things like the device it's running on, the network quality and much more. But most importantly for us developers is how do we use the video calling API to build up an application. So this is what we'll focus on today. So for prerequisites, prerequisites, pre so for prerequisites, we only need a node installation of at least version 18, as well as yarn in version 1.22 or higher. So let's dive right in. First thing we do is we check for the node version. That's sufficient for us. And the yarn version, which is also higher than 1.22, which is great. And now we can set up a project using Vt. We will use the React TypeScript template and run this command. We are using Vt for this, which is a tool to build web projects, which has some very nice features that you can check out. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. And since it is now done, we can now change into our newly created folder and add the dependency for stream video, the video react SDK. This will take a while. And once that is finished, we can actually run the project and see how it looks. Perfect. Now let's run yarn dev. And you can see it exposes this URL and we can open up a new tab with this URL and see the project is now created. We have the stream dependency. So we can get started with the development part. Let's start building up the UI. First, we opened up the project in VS Code. The main file that we will take a look at is the app.tsx. And let's get rid of the sidebar here. So what we will do is we will select everything using command A and delete it because the best way to avoid complex code is to write no code at all, right? So what we will do now is we will build up the UI step by step, but first we need to prepare a few things. Specifically, we need a few credentials to access the application. Of course, one possibility is to create a custom project, but we want to be efficient and fast here, so we provide you with something special. If we switch to the browser, you can head over to our React video calling tutorial, which can be found on our website. I will leave a link in the description. And if you scroll down here, you will see a box with credentials that you can use to build up a sample app, which is exactly what we will do. So let's switch back to VS Code and get started. Now, first we initialize the necessary constants that we need by starting off with the API key. Remember, we took this directly from here. So you can just copy over these values. The API key is necessary to identify the correct stream project that we are using in this tutorial. Next up is a token that we need for authenticating the user and a user ID that is also auto-generated. And finally, we want a call ID because we want to join a call as soon as we start the application. Next, we import the user type from the SDK and create a sample user that we will use to log in. We need an ID that we have from here, a name and an image. We will next initialize the stream video client. So you can use it and build a constant of client 
like this. And for this, we need the API key, a user, and a token to initialize the user. We then create the call using the call ID that we got from the system. And finally, we call the join method on the call. And if the call has not been created yet, we want to do just that. That is all the preparation we need. Now we can start building up the UI for this. So let's first save the project for the first time. Good job. When building out the UI, we have two possibilities. The first one is to build out the UI ourselves. In this case, the Stream Video SDK gives us a lot of useful hooks, as we've seen before, to access the necessary data, and we can build out the UI completely ourselves. We will do that for the participant list, so we will render the video streams of the different participants of the call now to see how we can do this. The second option that we have is to use the pre-built components from the SDK. While this does not allow us the same level of customization, we instead get a lot of things for free, and we will see that later in the video. So first, let's build out the participant list ourselves. Now we will first create a component for ourselves called my UI layout that we will pack all the necessary UI that we create into. First, we want access to the call, of course. Uh, we can use the use call hook provided by the stream video SDK. I will come back to that in a second. Next, we will import these two hooks. The stream video SDK makes heavy use of custom hooks to make it really easy to access necessary properties whenever we build our own layout. In this case, we want access to the calling state and the participant count. Then we import both the calling state and the participant count from these custom hooks. We say if we are not in the calling state dot joint, then we just show a loading indicator. And if we are in the calling state for now, let's just show the text here that says the call ID and has the number of participants. Now this won't do anything yet. But we now want to see what we're building in real time. So let's first start the development server again. So we open up the terminal and we say yarn.dev. Yarn.dev, no dot. OK, that's running. So let's bring this up in a split view. So we have the browser on the right side and our code on the left. So we see what we're building live. Now we need to implement the app component again because the React app will use that as the starting point of our application. And you want to fill that up with these two objects, the stream video object as well as the stream call object. Now these are necessary because they provide every other element below them in the DOM with the necessary hooks that we've been using before. So it's necessary to wrap everything we have in that. The stream video object will allow us to access the client and the stream call object will allow us to access the call and all the other things that we're importing at the top here. So saving this will not do much, but now we can also add our layout element. And if we save now and reload, we will see we first see the loading it asks us to access the camera, we will allow that, and access the microphone, we will also allow that. And now we say the call with the ID has one participant. So it's clearly working. And with that, we're done. We have finished building our video calling app. Congratulations. Yeah! Of course not. The next step will be creating the UI for the call itself, rendering our video as well as the video of other participants. So let's do just that. Before we do that, however, let's take one more moment to prove that our app is actually working. So let's jump back into the browser because what we have now is the text, but it says one participant, which is, well, us. So how can we prove that? Because like we only have one device, right? 
Luckily, we give you a nice preview for that because if you switch to the tutorial that we have, that you can find here, link in the description, and you can then scroll down towards this section here. Now what we can do is we can hit the join call button. This allows us to join the call from a tool that we as stream provide. So let's just join the call here. Uh, it will load. And uh, if we switch back to our app, it now says two participants. So it's clearly working. Let's continue with the development. The goal that we have in mind is we want to add UI for both the local participant as well as all the other remote participants that may join our call. So let's jump into VS Code to build out this UI. We will maintain the code in my UI layout, but we want to add to that now. First, we want to add a participants list. So that's the list of people who joined the call, specifically not the local user. We will do that in the next step. It will get some props, which is an array of stream video participants. We take out these participants from the props and then we render everything. We choose a simple flex layout uh, where we have a gap of eight pixels between all the participants and we just show it through the entire width of the window. The only thing remaining is we can now map over the participants and for each participant we show a window. We give it a width of 100% and an aspect ratio of 3 to 1 and we then render a participant view. This is again a stream component that we can leverage where we render the video of a participant together with a name and the audio. Well, now we're showing the other participants, but now we also want to add a floating window of our local participant here. So let's do that next. We add a my floating local participant component. It again gets props, this time only a single stream video participant. We say, let's take the participant from the props. Let's create a div that we return. And then we style that. Again, we want to have it floating at the top left of the window. So we give it a position of absolute. We say, let's make it a distance of 15 pixels from the top and the left, give it a width of 240 pixels and a height of 135, uh, give it a slight box shadow to look nice and a border radius. And with that, we can just say, if there's a participant, let's render the participant view again and hand in the participant itself. Now we've prepared the components, but of course what is left is hooking them up in the UI. So let's do that. We scroll up to our My UI layout. And for now, we are still rendering the participant count, which we get from this hook. Now, in order to get both the local participant as well as the remote participants, we can get two other hooks. Specifically, we get the use local participant and the use remote participant hooks, which are very convenient for our use case. So we take these hooks, we extract the local participant and the remote participants from it. And then in the UI, we first add a stream theme, which is again a nice component that we can use that prepares the layout for us. And we give it the position relative to have the floating view of our local participant relative to that. And then we simply add both the participant list as well as the floating local participant. With that, we can get rid of our call count here. So let's do just that and get rid of this one as well. And there's still an import that we don't use. So we got rid of all the errors. We save it. So let's switch over to the browser. We see the local participant already in the call. So what we can do now, we can join again from the tutorial. We join the call, hit join call. And switching back to our application, we see it's working. So very nice. 
the layout looks good. We can see ourselves. We can see the remote participant. It looks a bit weird because of the aspect ratio that we chose, but everything is rendering as we would expect it. So very nice. I don't think this will ever get boring, to be honest. I don't think so. Now that we know how to build a custom layout, let's take a look at how we can use the built-in stream components to build a really functional application from scratch. Small hint, it's really easy. Why do we want to demonstrate this? First, of course, to show you the power that the Stream SDK has. And second, while our application looks decent and we're rendering the local as well as the remote participants, we still lack basic features that a video app should have. For example, call controls to enter and leave the call, options which camera to use or which microphone to use, and more. So let's see how we can leverage the built-in components to build just that. For that, I want to first take a look at how the app looks at the moment. And we still are only rendering the local participant here. So let's see how this will change with the things we're about to do. So we switch back to VS Code. And we are rendering the participant list as well as the local participant here. And when we use the built-in components, this becomes much simpler because we don't need to use all these custom hooks. So we can get rid of them, get rid of the local participant as well as the remote participants. And of course, we can also get rid of the custom components here. And instead, we use a speaker layout, which does the same work that we've just done but in a more proficient way. We say the participant's bar position should be at the bottom. We also add call controls, which we will see in a second what they do. Uh, we need to add some imports and we can get rid of the style here because everything should work out of the box. Now, the last thing we need to do is go to our index CSS and add some custom CSS. Basically set a background color, some height, width, and a little bit of layouting. And if we save this, we switch back to the browser and we see it's working perfectly. We get options to disable video, to mute the mic, and everything is rendered very nicely. We even get screen sharing, stats, recording options. And best of all, we can end the call. Bye-bye. Awesome. In just this short time, we were able to build a fully functional video calling application. We have learned how to use the built-in hooks that the Stream Video SDK offers. We learned how to build a custom UI and we've also learned how we can leverage the built-in components to build powerful applications with not many lines of code. If you want to learn more, we have plenty of content for you ready at our docs, which you can find at getstream.io slash video slash docs slash react. I will add these in the description of the video. And if you scroll down here, you see a lot of concepts explained and a UI cookbook, how to build custom components such as call controls, video layout, and much more. So definitely check this out if you're interested in that. Thank you for following this video. We're excited to see what you build with the SDK and see you next time. And please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I promised my colleagues that you would do that, so please, Please do it for me.